Hey everybody, thanks for joining White Dog Outdoors. Today we're gonna to be talking about the common mistakes we see people make when they're learning urine nymphing and how that keeps them from being successful. So if you wanna be more effective at urine nymphing, stay right there. Dude. That's a gorgeous fish. Holy frig. Oh my god. Wow, what a beast. Thanks for joining us. Before we get started, just a couple of quick things. We haven't done a giveaway in a while, and I meant to do a giveaway when we hit 5,000 subscribers, but to be completely honest, we hit that number so fast that I wasn't ready for it. So we're gonna do it now. We're gonna give away a white dog snapback hat in this video. All you gotta do is be a subscriber on the channel, give us a thumbs up, and leave a comment down below letting us know what kinds of things you wanna see. We are gonna be randomly selecting a, a comment from this video, and we'll be, we'll be announcing the winner in an upcoming video. So I wanna answer one question in particular. We've been working on a Euronymphing Basics for Beginners video for a couple of years, capturing footage here and there, but I've got an outline that, that is probably gonna give us about a 45 minute video, be very detailed, to for anybody wanting to get into Euronymphing to give them all the information they need to be able to get started and to be really effective on the water. So we're gonna be partnering with Ansible Media and going out and capturing some of the really specific footage that I need to get for this. But let me know down below if you wanna see that Euronymphing Basics for Beginners video, okay? So again, in order to take part in the giveaway of the snapback hat, just give us a thumbs up on this video, leave a comment down below and be a subscriber on the channel and actually, would you believe that 92% of our views come from people who are not subscribed to the channel? So if you're out there and you're enjoying the channel and, and you're, you're learning and you're enjoying our adventures, I hope you'll consider subscribing and being part of our adventure with us. So as guides, we have the benefit of seeing a lot of people who are new to fly fishing and new to urine and thing. A lot of people come to us because they've seen our urine and thing videos and they want to learn urine and thing. So we get to see a lot of the common mistakes that people typically make when they're urine and So I really wanted to make a video that's gonna help a lot of people out there with some of the basics that are gonna help them to be effective. So the number one mistake I see people make is that their flies are not heavy enough. That was my biggest mistake for 20 years. I used to hate, I used to hate nymphing. Hated it, absolutely hated it. I knew that people could do it effectively, but I never could. And my biggest reason why is that I didn't have heavy enough flies. I hated that I could never tell what was going on at the end of my line. And it is entirely because I did not use really heavy flies and I did not keep a tight line on those flies. That is everything. Okay, so we need to understand a little bit about water dynamics and trout behavior to understand why we need heavy flies. So in terms of water dynamics, when you're looking at a run, you see the water going along the surface at a particular speed. The water on the bottom is gonna be going much slower than that water on the top. And that's because there's rocks, there's substrate, it's slowing that flow down in the bottom of the water column, whereas at the top, there's nothing, there's nothing getting in its way, it's just going much faster. So those trout are going to want to be in the slowest water possible so they exert the least amount of energy possible while being in a good place to where the water is gonna bring them food, right? So they're most likely gonna be on the bottom in most situations on a river. So you need to get down to the bottom. You need to go low and slow. It's really, really important. You cannot do that without heavy flies, okay? So when you're fishing, your cast should look. You're gonna flick it upstream you're gonna see that that line comes down about the speed of the water, and then if you have heavy enough flies, you're gonna be keeping a tight line. If you have heavy enough flies, you're gonna see that line slow down. That means you're down to depth, you're down into the slower water, and that faster water is gonna be going faster than your line, and you wanna go as low and slow as possible. You wanna keep a touch on that line, and be keeping that rod out. You're gonna keep that rod out, up, tight line, and you're gonna be feeling it going along the bottom. You should be able to feel it ticking along the bottom. And let me tell you what, when a fish hits, you're gonna either see that leader jump or you're gonna feel it. I find 90% of the time, I'll go back through my video and I'll be like, how did I know that fish hit? The leader didn't jump, the leader didn't do anything. It's because, I'll watch right here, this little piece of line right here will just tighten up just a tiny bit. And that tells me that I am feeling that in the rod. So I would say 80, probably about 80% of the fish that I catch 
I'm feeling rather than seeing. It's just because I'm keeping such a tight line and I'm keeping those flies on the bottom and I'm feeling them. I have enough weight in those flies that I can actually feel them. So that is really important. Make sure you are using heavy enough flies. If you see that your, your, your line is not slowing down, you either one, are in water that's just too fast, sometimes that does happen, or your, your flies are not heavy enough. They really need to be able to be heavy enough to get down. If, 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 there's, if you're in a run that you think is good and those flies are not getting down, you're too light. More weight. And I do not add weight on the line. All the weight goes in the flies. I, do, I will not add split shot on the line. So that's why I tie a lot of my own flies because I found that the, the flies I get from fly shops and manufacturers and stuff, they just weren't heavy enough for what I wanted to do. So you'll see I have a lot of fly tying videos. Um, I'll leave them down in the description below, but there's a lot of urine and thing fly tying. And I'll show you, you can see how I tie those. So I tie them with uh, tungsten beads, but I also tie them with a lot of lead to make sure that they're heavy enough to get down and be able to feel those fish. Okay, so we have heavy enough flies. We're getting down into the bottom of the water column where the fish are. We're starting to feel bottom and we have a likelihood of catching a fish now, right? The next biggest mistake I see people make is they're not sure if they've got bottom or if they've got a fish and they don't set the hook. Whenever there's a possibility that you have a fish, set the hook. If you feel, if you feel something and you're not sure if it's bottom, set the hook. If you see your line pause or you see it jump and you're not sure, set the hook, okay? Always set the hook if you're not sure. And I've had people ask me like, well, am I gonna disturb the fish if I'm setting the hook? Listen, you're using really thin tippet, you're using generally small flies, you're not going to really hurt anything by setting the hook, right? It's not like you're making a big splash with your line. You're not making a big splash with these huge flies or some big indicator. You're, you're making a very small impact on the water. So whenever there's any doubt, set the hook. Now, one of the tricks is setting the hook in the right way. So a lot of people that are dry fly fishermen or any other kind of fishing, when you set the hook, a lot of times you're lifting straight up, right? You fly, you're dry fly fishing, you see a fish rise, you lift that straight up is not what you want to do when you're you're a nymphing. Um, you, you always want to set the hook downstream and low. What you want to do is you want to snap it to the side, downstream and low, okay? It's going to give you a better angle, a better percentage of hooking up. That was one of the biggest mistakes that I made at the beginning of my urine nymphing was I was so used to setting the hook straight up. I'd feel something and I'd be going like this above my head. I'd hook up for a little while. I was losing too many fish and that is a lot to do with just because I wasn't angling my hook set right. So angle your hook set, hook set low and downstream. That's going to give you the best percentage hookup. Okay, so the third thing I see is people are not casting the way you should for your nymphing. This is not dry fly fishing where you've got long, beautiful lines and tight loops and delicate presentations. It is not that whatsoever. Uh, a lot of fly fishermen don't like your nymphing because it's not that the traditional kind of cast. Everything with fly, with uronymphing is gonna be an oval. Think about an oval around your head. Those flies are gonna go in an oval around your head and your rod tip is gonna go in an oval around your head. Okay, so let's start at the top of the cast where I'm putting my flies into the water upstream. I'm gonna follow those flies down. And again, if I'm doing this right, my flies are gonna slow down as I hit, as I get down to depth, right? I'm gonna follow that with my rod tip all the way down. And when I get down toward the bottom of my drift, I'm gonna set the hook just in case there's a fish, but that's also gonna propel my flies into my, into my cast. I'm gonna go, remember, I'm gonna go downstream and low. So I'm gonna go like this. It's gonna start the flies going in an oval behind me. I'm gonna hesitate here just a second, let those flies come around a little bit. I'm gonna bring my rod tip around, around my head and to the front and flick it forward. So I'm creating this oval, snap around behind my head, forward. And that's gonna bring my, my flies in an oval around my head and my rod tip's gonna be in an oval around my head. And it's going to put my flies right upstream where I wanted them again, and we're going to start that process all over again. Okay, so urine and thing is a little bit different with the casting. It's not as pretty or glorious as maybe dry fly fishing can be. Um, I actually think urine and thing is easier for people to learn than dry fly fishing because dry fly fishing can be so technical and delicate on the cast. Urine and thing is not. I think it's actually a lot easier. You just need to know that motion in particular. Okay, as soon as you start trying to do any kind of backward and forward motion like a fly fisherman would with a dry fly, you are gonna get tangles in your in your flies. Uh, it's not a good thing to do. A lot of times what'll happen to me is I won't have room behind me to be able to do that full motion or um, 
or I'll set the hook and I'll realize that my flies are going up into a tree and I quickly snap it down to keep them from, from going into the tree. And inevitably what happens because I went forward and backward in the same motion, I end up with a big rat's nest in my, in my line. Uh, that's really, really annoying. You want to avoid that whenever possible. So be aware of what's around you and what, what you're going to be able to do with a hook set um, and what you're going to be able to do with a cast. Otherwise you catch trees behind you. If you do have trees behind you, another technique I use is I'll let those flies float out down below me. So I'll let them, compl I'll let my line, the current take them out completely. And then I'll flip my rod up like this and I'll just cast them forward like that. I'm just cutting off kind of part of that oval. I'm not going back behind me as much so I, I can avoid those trees, but I'm letting the current take my line out and lay it out. So it's gonna create some tension in my rod and I can use that to then flick forward and put my flies where I want to. Just be careful you're not doing a back and forth. Back and forth will end in a tangle almost every time. Okay, so let's assume we're doing all the right things, right? We're, we're using the right flies, we're in the right water, we're getting down, we got a bite, we set the hook the right way, and now we got a fish on, now what do we do, right? I see people who are new to fly fishing or new, new to urine anything in particular, um, they lose fish after they have them buttoned up because they don't really know how to, how to fight the fish. Okay, so again, when you're gonna set that hook, you can set that hook low and downstream, right? We're going across the current and keeping that fish, um, keeping that fish hooked that way. Now, one of the most important things, these, if you're using a urinimping rod, these things are built to keep fish pinned, all right? So we're using barbless hooks a lot of time. You give them any kind of slack, that fish is gone. That hook slides out and you're gone, right? You cannot give them any slack whatsoever, ever, right? So what you wanna do, and I see a lot of people, they fight fish and they, they're fighting the fish, their rod tip is high and they're fighting the fish up. You're not really making ground on that fish if you're lifting straight up, right? The way to make ground on a fish, the way to, the way to fight a fish is to keep your rod low, keep a deep bend in your rod. These rods are built to bend. I've had people worry that they're gonna break a rod, that they're gonna break a rod on the hook set or they're gonna break a rod where they're fighting a fish. These rods are built to bend, let them bend. Okay, get a nice deep C bend in that rod fight that fish, keep the rod low, and side pressure. Side pressure is gonna work them across the current. It's gonna keep them from getting comfortable, right? You, 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 need to, you need to get this fish quickly to you, right? So hopefully if you're into fly fishing, you're into urine fishing, you're into conservation and, and the health of the fish, you need to land these fish quickly and help them recover and get them released effectively so that we don't, so that they're there for us to catch again, right? So the way to do that is side pressure. You're gonna move them quickly across the stream you're gonna learn what your rod and your tippet is capable of. These rods are built to protect tippet. You can use 6X tippet and use these 10 and a half, whatever, th you know, foot three weights, two weights, whatever. They're gonna bend a lot. They're gonna help protect that tippet. They're gonna help fight that fish, okay? So you can put more pressure on these fish than you really think you can. And I learned the hard way too. I, I caught some big fish and I fought them longer than I should have. I didn't put enough pressure on them and I kind of felt bad. I know the fish swam away healthy, but still, I fought them for too long. You, you don't want to fight these fish for too long or you're going to decrease their chance of survival. So again, low to the side, side pressure, keep a deep bend in that rod. You're going to work them across the stream, okay? Now, if you're fighting a big fish, and I learned this from salmon fishing, where it's really hard to land these 25 pound salmon, and I'm doing the low, I'm doing the side pressure, but they're dug in, they're buried, and it's hard to get them out of that fast current, right? So a lot of times what I'll do, I'll reel down them a little bit, I got that side pressure, but I'm going to try to lift their head just a little bit. And a lot of times when you lift their head, you, you almost disengage them from, from the leverage that they have. And then once you get their head lifted, start pulling back like this. And you can get them to come across stream. You can make headway if you've got a big fish that way. Okay. So as you get a fish closer to hand, uh, what you're going to do is, you're, you're, again, you want to keep that side pressure. You're going to keep bringing them towards you. Don't let them get comfortable in the current. Don't lift them straight up or they're just going to be, you're not going to be making any progress. Side pressure, get them towards you. And then try to keep that fish ahead of you, above you in the current. Sometimes it's not easy to do while you're fighting a fish. They're going to run downstream. Hey, it is what it is. When you're getting ready to land that fish, it's going to be easier if you get them above you. If you get that fish above you, you're going to use the current. You're, and you're going to lift slowly. You're going to keep that fish toward the top of the water column. You're going to try to keep his head lifted. But you're going to let the water carry him back to you and you're gonna slide the net underneath him. A lot of times that's the most effective way to be able to net a fish, especially a big fish. Hey, once you've landed this fish, we need to keep that fish healthy. So once you've landed this fish, keep them in the water. So imagine that you just ran like a 100 yard dash or you ran a half marathon or something like that, right? That fish has been fighting, he's been fighting hard. 
he's expended a lot of energy. Imagine you just ran that, that sprint or that half marathon, you crossed the finish line and somebody jammed your head under the water and you couldn't breathe, right? Your body needs that oxygen after that workout. So does the fish, okay? So as soon as you land a fish, don't lift them out of the water and be like, oh, I caught a fish. Keep them in the water, keep them healthy. I let them recover in the water, in the net, keeping them calm, keeping them in the cold water, cold moving water for at least a minute, maybe two minutes, um, depending on how the fight was. That fish should not be out of the water for more than five seconds at a time. You can unhook the fish while he's in the water. You can get a picture, a very quick picture, um, within five to 10 seconds. So lift that fish up, get the picture, bring him back down. If something's taking longer than five se seconds, just bring him back down into the water. And then what I do is I lift the fish up, I keep the net underneath him. If any starts to flop or anything starts to happen, I just lower him back down into the net. Um, and that way you can kind of maintain control, but you're keeping that fish healthy. So anyway, you know, let's, let's try to keep these fish healthy when we're catching them and we can all have better fisheries. <clears throat> so another key piece, and I, I call this maybe a tip, maybe it is a mistake, um, but a lot of times people will go out and fish and, and they're fishing downstream. Anytime you're above the fish and you're fishing downstream, that fish has a much higher chance of being able to see you and spooking. And I find that a lot of times you're not going to be as effective that way. Um, I almost, almost always hit a stream and I'll go upstream. It's very rare that I'll go downstream. Um, and that's because a couple of things. I don't want that fish to see me. I don't want him to see my feet moving in the water. So either he's going to see me above the water or he's going to see my feet in the water. If I'm above him, near anything is fairly close, close quarters fishing. So like you got to be careful what that fish is going to see. They can spook. And so typically moving upstream and fishing the water ahead of you is going to keep that fish from seeing you or spooking a lot of the time. The other part is, if you think about the drifting that you're making, right? You're hitting upstream, you're coming down, you're getting down to depth, and you've got a certain area that is your drift, right? Before you get to the end and you got to pull out. If you're moving downstream and you're taking a couple of steps and casting, a couple of casts, take a couple of steps down, cast, what's the new water that's being seen by the... By, where is that fish in terms of where he's seeing your flies most likely, right? most likely the new water that you're covering every cast is at the very bottom of the water column or at the very bottom down below you so number one you're going to have the worst possible angle on a hook set you're going to be pulling too much up of that fish and you're going to miss the fish potentially more and then that fish potentially also sees you if you're working upstream and you're taking a couple steps upstream and then casting take a couple steps upstream and then cast the new area that you're covering on your drifts is not downstream of you it's those it's that first couple of feet upstream and so you're going to have that fish is going to be facing upstream he's not going to see you and he's you're going to have a much better angle on that hook set when you go downstream because he's not going to be way down below you so i think your hookup percentage will be a lot higher if you move yourself upstream rather than downstream and i think you'll just be a lot more effective that um, moving upstream rather than downstream whenever possible that's what i do all right so those are the five biggest mistakes I see people make that keep them from being successful out on the water when you're urinating thing. So I will leave you with, they're not quite called the mistakes, but I'll leave you with a couple other bonus items here. Um, one is that you're gonna need to learn to read water. That's gonna be really, really important when you're urinating things. You gotta start learning where those fish are gonna be. And reading the water is so important. So what other thing I'll say is, Urinifing is an incredible tool to help you learn how to read water. Um, because you're using those heavy flies and you're feeling where the, where the flies are going, you'll see areas, hey, that, that line is going too, too fast, it's not slowing down. And then you hit an area, oh, it slowed down, I'm in a little deeper here, I got a little slow section. And you start to pay attention to those things and you start to realize where those fish are gonna be. Pay attention to where you're having success. That's gonna help you learn how to read water, okay? Typically, a lot of times you're looking for deeper areas that maybe are a little bit slower. You're looking for an eddy behind a rock. You're looking for converging currents where maybe there's a faster current and a slower current. A lot of times in a riffle, you're just looking for kind of the deepest spot. And if you can see that you're gonna be able to go slow through that area, that's the key. The, the fish is gonna want that slowest water. So urine infant can be a phenomenal tool to help you learn how to read water. And it's gonna be really, really important to being successful. One of the most exciting things for me now is reading water, breaking it apart, figuring out exactly where I'm gonna go, saying, oh, that's the best spot. There's gonna be a fish in there. And then you drift down through there, you get a take and you catch a fish. Incredibly rewarding. So I think it can be an incredible tool to help you learn how to read water. Spend the time to learn how to read water and pay attention to what's going on to help you put you in better situations. 
The last piece of advice that I'll give is, and I learned this from salmon and steelhead fishing, I basically urine it for salmon and steelhead. It's basically the technique that I use. Um, and the last thing you want to do is have work all day to, to hook up with that fish and then find out that your line wasn't in good shape and have that fish break off. Believe me, that happened more than a couple of times to me in steelhead and even salmon. It's a heartbreaker. You don't want that to happen, okay? Constantly be checking your line. When you're urinating thing and you're using those techniques for salmon and steelhead that I do, you can see some of my other videos, I'll link them down below for my salmon and steelhead stuff, is you're on or near the bottom all the time, which means your line is coming into contact with the bottom. You're getting hung up. Um, you gotta constantly check your line to make sure that it's okay and make sure that it's healthy, right? You don't wanna hook up a big fish, find out there's a neck in your line, your line breaks and that fish is gone. So I hope you guys have learned a lot by watching this video. Uh, again, let me know if you want to see that urine anything basics for beginners. I really just touched on a few items here, but there's a ton of detail that can go into how to how to really do all this, how to be really effective at urine anything. If you want to see that in-depth video of how to go from zero to kind of urine and hero, um, then let me know if you want to see that urine anything basics for beginners video, and we will put every effort into that. So thank you everybody for taking the time to watch this video, for supporting the channel in the past, for getting us above 5,000 faster than I could have ever believed. Um, it's been an awesome ride. I hope you'll consider joining us for everything we do in the future. But uh, anyway, I've done a lot of talking and there's a river behind me and I wanna go fish. So we're gonna go do that. Um, if you guys like what we're doing, definitely subscribe and we will see you soon for our next adventure.